call back with verification using SSML, Synthetic Speech Markup Language. So in the AWS console, there is a sample call flow that uses, uh, sets you up for uh, offering the callback option to your callers. However, it doesn't have a verification. In other words, the caller says, uh, please call me back at a phone number, and then it hangs up. What we want is to be able to verify the caller's input, give them the opportunity to correct it if it was entered wrong, and then uh, speak that number back to them so they can confirm it. So I'm going to walk you through how uh, you can do this using uh, speech markup language. So in our example, we have uh, some uh, starter steps before we get to the callback because we like to modulize the, the code. So the first thing we do when the caller hits the AWS instance is check the schedule. Uh, are we on hours or off hours? If we're off hours, transfer to voicemail. If we're on hours, let's uh, figure out, are they calling sales or support uh, or whatever? And the way we do that is typically uh, either by the DNS that they dialed, which can link directly to a, a particular queue call flow or to a... Um, a menu option. In this case, we go to a menu option, press one for this, two for that, and then we send them on their way. But before we send them on their way, uh, we set the queue flow experience. So there's a, a call flow that uh, dictates what the caller is going to experience while they're in queue. And if you want that to be different based on what queue they selected, you will need to set that experience through the set queue flow uh, step. The next thing we're going to do is set the queue. So in the initial part of the call flow, we want to get these parameters out of the way, and then we can transfer them to the call flow that is going to do the following. First, it's going to check the queue status, then it's going to offer them the option uh, for a callback. So the steps that we do in there, we'll log in and take a look at the actual call flow, but let me uh, walk you through this, the actual pieces we're going to use. We've got the first check queue status. What we do here is there's really no estimated wait time uh, in AWS currently as of this recording, though things move very quickly at AWS. That could not be true when you're watching this, so please double check. But at this time, there's no estimated uh, wait time. But what you can do is do a check queue status. And in that, you can either select the time in queue or the queue capacity, create a value, and say, well, if time in queue is greater than five, go this way. If it's less than five, go this way. Uh, something to that effect. We can go ahead and play a prompt then and announce that, hey, the time in queue is currently greater than five minutes. Uh, do you want a call back? Press one if you want a call back, or two if uh, uh, you want a queue, or in this case, press one if you'd want to continue to wait, or two for a call back. If they select, um, that they want to wait. We're going to once again select, set the queue flow and transfer them to queue. Uh, I typically bundle these two steps all the time just so there's uh, you know less um, opportunity for error. And again, if you want a different queue experience based on the queue they select, first you've got to set that experience, uh, design it and set it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is store customer input. We'll prompt them for a number and set it as a phone number. I'll show you this inside the actual script. And then we'll get the customer input uh, by uh, asking them to verify the number that was entered. Now, how do you do that? Well, we set a value in the uh, previous step and we read that back to them. We read that value back. But how do you do that? We use uh, SSML, the synthetic speech markup language. And then if they confirm it, 
uh, we set the callback number. If not, we get a chance to re-enter it. Uh, um, when it's confirmed, we transfer to queue and then hang up. So uh, let's go ahead and log in and uh, take a look at this. We are logged into the Amazon Connect dashboard. We've pulled up the call flow we previously created, and I'll walk you through the key pieces. Entry point comes to the check queue status. Now, as I pointed out, we don't have a um, estimated wait time, but we can either look at the time in queue or the queue capacity. And in this case, what we've done is to, to set a uh, Boolean value of is the time in queue less than five minutes? That's what we're going to look for. Uh, you can set this to milliseconds, seconds, hours, whatever you want. But in this instance, we want to know, we want to be able to alert the caller of estimated wait time. Now, this is not the real wait time, but it's uh, the only tool we have available at this time. And that's subject to change. AWS uh, uh, aggressively pushes out new features. So at the time of this recording, this is how it was done. Uh, please uh, check. Uh, if you implement this, that there might be a better way to do this. But right now, this is my uh, estimated wait time. So at this point, we check. And if the time is less than five minutes, uh, we play a prompt that says your estimated wait time is less than five minutes. If it doesn't match, it's going to follow this path. And it's going to be, please note, the average wait time is, uh, is greater than five minutes. The next thing we want to do is prompt them do they want to uh, continue to uh, wait in queue or would they like a callback? And the only thing I'd point out here is uh, we use the text to speech as we're prototyping. It's very, very helpful. If I had a, a dollar for every minute, I had to wait for the client to create the necessary recorded prompts. I'd never get these projects done. So using the text-to-speech to prototype is real helpful. But in this step, you go ahead, select text-to-speech, put in your prompt, um, interpret it as text. Uh, later on, you'll see that we interpret it as something else. But right now, it's text. Uh, we tell uh, the application that we're looking for DTMF, not an Amazon LexBot. We have another clip on doing this through the LexBot. And then uh, we offer them the options. Now, when you bring this up the first time, these options are blank. You have to hit uh, add another condition, and you can put in you know, option 9 if you want. All right? OK. Having done that, and they have uh, selected they want a callback. So at that point, we're going to use the store customer input, not get customer input, store customer input, because we don't just want to get a single digit. Uh, what we're looking to do here is to uh, prompt them to enter 10 digits. Once again, we're using um, the text-to-speech. Uh, and down here, you'll go ahead and set it for phone number. Uh, select the country code and set some delay between digits. Now, at that point, we're storing the phone number they dialed. The next thing we want to do is set the contact attributes. So in here is where we're going to uh, set up a variable name of our choosing. That's the destination key. Here I've uh, chosen uh, a variable number in. Uh, you have the ability to uh, save, uh, to use the attributes that are in the system. You can define an attribute. You can use an external attribute. In this case, we're using a system um, attribute. And the system attribute is that are available to us in this step are custom number, dialed number, customer callback, do not select this because we haven't set that yet. What we're looking for is the stored customer input. And that is going to be assigned to the variable number in. 
And again, you select the name here as you see fit. So at that point, uh, we will get the he, customer's uh, input. We're going to ask them to confirm it. This time, we are going to use a customer input. Uh, they're only going to enter one digit. So here's the SSML. So text to speech. We're going to say the number you entered was, and then read back the number they entered. Note that that format is dollar sign dot attributes dot the name of the variable that you put in the set uh, uh, customer attributes. And this is interpreted as SSML. It's a markup language. It's like HTML uh, format. You, you've got your opening tags, your closing tags, etc. Uh, but in this case, it's going to speak the number you entered was, and then it's going to read back the telephone uh, number uh, based on the variable that you previously set in which that number was stored. You're going to use SS uh, markup language to in speak it as a telephone number. You could have put uh, uh, another format in here, but we want it to sound like a telephone number. And at that point, how this is uh, communicated to the instance is that down here you select not text as we did in the previous, but uh, SSML. And again, it's GTMF, not uh, Flex. And, you know, one to confirm, two to re-enter. And at that point, uh, we give them the opportunity to confirm it with that digit. We uh, do a check if, if uh, they need to re-enter it. Re -enter it. We just go ahead and connect this back to the get input. If not, we set the callback number and transfer it to Q. This will be filled in automatically with callback since you set the callback number. And then we play a nice thank you prompt. And ultimately, we just uh, terminate the call flow with a disconnect and hang up. And that's it. That's how you use uh, SSML to confirm a callback number. Hope you have found this uh, informative. And I thank you for viewing.